Hey guys, welcome. So uh, KDE Neon 527.8, hot off the press as of last week, uses a 6.2 series kernel. This video is made for the new users that just installed this distribution that chose the bare minimal install. I will uh, talk about things in here that um, if you are missing these icons, the documents, download, music, pictures, public templates and videos, you can certainly add those manually, but I'll show you a command that will blow all those in there um, in a console command. I'll talk a little bit about uh, some tips on settings, um, your application menu, and uh, a little bit about themes and how to recover from them in case something goes uh, well south. Uh, in general, this is made for uh, brand new users of KDE Neon. I'm going to approach it from the angle that maybe you are brand new to uh, Linux and Plasma desktops also. I will say welcome folks. So you can log into this platform two ways in the X11 or the Wayland and you can do that from the login screen it will be toward the left hand bottom side where you can click that you can see what my hardware is. I am filming in 1920 by 1080 so you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly and uh, a lot of you folks uh, may not realize this but you're YouTube players sometimes default to 460. That is a lot lower screen resolution than I'm filming in currently. 1920 by 1080. All right, so I'll say welcome, folks. And I'm going to use Alt and F4 to temporarily close this. So I will talk about a little bit about troubleshooting toward the end, too, in case you installed a theme and it didn't go gracefully. And uh, you have no panel. And you're trying to think of how do I recover? One thing to remember always is KRunner is running in the background. So just in case you don't have a panel, you can always type in SCT for settings. And then you can do a default restore. And I would suggest when you get the dialog box, you pick both of them and hit apply. All right, I'll come back to this in a minute. So um, I'm going to talk, first talk about if you're missing these folders. Again, perform this only if you're missing these because that's what I chose, a bare minimal install, and it didn't add these at all. I had to manually put these in. But that's okay, I have one command for that instead of manually creating those. So just start typing KO and look for console. It's already highlighted for me because KRunner found it immediately. Hit enter. And then I'm gonna actually punch up my history buffer. And again, I'm filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player. I can, I can make some things large, but not everything. And I know you can see the first command there, sudo apt. That's what I'm using, simple screen. However, the command that I wanted to point out to you is this one. That uh, xdg-user-dirs-update, one line command, no sudo, in your console command, will, uh, should populate these folders if they are missing. If they are missing. If you have those, then ignore this part. I'm going to uh, do Alt and F4. We have a couple things to think about. Workspace behavior maybe, single click versus double. That's how you change that. Maybe spell checkers. Spell check or put in spell. This is normally off. You, It looks like that. So click that and hit apply. All right, I'll come back a little bit uh, with themes a little bit later. So let me first talk about the panel itself or the application menu. This is the standard what you get by default. Bob is just a made up name if you're curious. Right click, show alternatives. Andromeda Launcher, first example. Again, Bob is just a made up name. I like to have fun once in a while. So this is what these icons look like. Now I would probably go to settings and pick a dark theme because this looks washed out. So not everybody's cup of tea, right? I'll talk a little bit heavier about that a little bit later as far as themes are concerned. Application dashboard looks like that. A little darker, got the little scroll menu, favorites, application, and of course the shutdown, restart, logout. I can also type and also look at widgets. Okay, I'm gonna hit escape. Right click, show alternatives. This is the mini one, application menu. It's a little smaller than the one I started with. And keep in mind, anytime you change themes or mouse cursors or pointers, you should always log out of your system and log back in, if not a restart. 
And sometimes these themes will change the timer on you. They will also change this setting sometimes. Workspace behavior. And another setting would be if you have icons on your desktop, they will also change this setting here. I currently have that set for jumbo. In other words, large. Okay, and then when you're adding themes, they sometimes add extra wallpaper. You'll see that in a minute when I get into themes. There's KDE Story and these are called sweet wallpapers. All right, so we can uh, add icons and remove icons on pen. And uh, I'm going to switch to the regular menu if you don't mind. So we're all sort of on the same page. And uh, I added LibreOffice 7.6. Very nice, very nice. So to uh, complement the uh, Office Suite, I also added Golden Dictionary. I find that one nice. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of, um, well, a lot of ads, junk that gets thrown in your face like the online dictionaries. And some of these also have pictures which you can copy into like LibreOffice Writer. But I'm going to use that icon for my guinea pig. So we can right click, we can add to desktop, add to the panel as a widget, not my favorite, uh, pin to taskbar. That's one of my favorites. Or I can also click and drag. So let's say you came in this menu from fresh. So you went and dragged the icon downstairs. You just let go of it. Now, why did it jump in front of that? Because that's an open program. I can't remove simple screen because I'm currently filming. However, I can move this around and rearrange the furniture a little bit. Okay, if I wanted to. I'm going to unpin that. So what are the other options? Well, I could right click and pin to the task manager and that's the same thing. I could still rearrange the furniture and unpin. What if I chose the other option? I would uh, make a panel widget out of it. Well, that one there puts it in the front, but when I click and try to drag it, it doesn't work that well. And when I right click, I have a different option than I have on this icon. All right, in this case, I'm gonna do the enter mode and I'm just gonna get rid of it. All right, so I will go back upstairs. Sorry, did I not get rid of it? I did not, did I? So, sorry, I thought I had removed it, so. There, now it's gone. Okay. So the other options too, using the same icon, I can also right click and add stuff to the panel and the desktop. So two things are on the taskbar or panel, and then I can add to desktop also this way. And uh, yes, I'm using jumbo icons. And then I can also drag this over here. And then I have two options. I have link, copy here, add as a widget. I'm gonna choose widget just to let you see it. Wow, that's a big difference. Right click, configure wallpaper, icons. It's set for jumbo currently. So if I set it for dinky, you'll get the idea here in a second. Now that's dinky, a little bit smaller than that actually. So anyways, I'm gonna go back, configure wallpaper thing, icons and drag this to uh, jumbo and do that. All right, so one thing that I'm going to point out to you is the workspace behavior, not yours, is set for double click. That would be double click in my file manager, which I'll get to a little bit later. And uh, this icon will require me to double click. So I'm going to click out for a second. And not, when I do a single, it doesn't activate it. This one does, though, when I click on it. Because it's a widget. Okay. Again, 7.6, if you're curious. So how do I treat this differences? What if I wanted to enlarge that puppy? Well, right click, enter mode. This is a widget. You need to pull the, uh, the little guy on the side. Then you can grab a hold of it and whatever mouse pointer that you're using, maybe it's the black one, uh, and then drag that around. And then once you get that done, then you can close that. I know this is way too big for most people. Right clicking on that icon, you can see I have a different property than if I right click on this icon. Move to trash. Right click, remove icon, and close. So again, what is your choices when you put stuff on your desktop? I would probably think about it and use the add desktop instead of dragging that icon there and making it a widget. But again, I can also do it this way 
and chose the uh, link here. Now I can move this around. Okay, so there's another option for you. I'll right click and remove it. So again, I can drag this all day long to the to uh, here. I'll put Chromium downstairs. Okay, again, that's this is one of those that I can unpin and also rearrange the furniture. All right, file manager time. A couple of tips in here you may have seen or seen may or may not seen it my video. So I have a couple of different ways to resize a box or a window. I can uh, double click anywhere on this line, providing my mouse cursor pointer tip is underneath that line. In other words, when the tip is there, I'm, I'm pretty much resizing the box. But when my pointer is a little underneath there, I can double click. I can also click and pull and then click and hold and push it up. I can pull it down and I can click and hold or I can, uh, I didn't mean to click in that field, but anyways, click and hold to move it around. And you can certainly do it the old fashioned way. Okay, zooming icons or holding down the control key, scrolling forward. And if you're scrolling back and it doesn't work, release the control key, click in here, click the control key once and try it. If it doesn't work, click it again and hold your control key. This does come in handy for resizing icons on the fly. And it certainly comes in handy for looking at thumbnails like this. And then once you get it to the size you want, you let go of the control key and they remain in this size. Then you can scroll normally. Right click, set anything as wallpaper pretty much. A couple of more tips for you of using documents. I'm gonna make this bigger for you. These two files are identical. So some of you folks that are more experienced with Linux probably understand you can create text files using no extensions. This is a text file. The thing I like about Kate, and I'm going to go jumbo here, is um, Kate the text editor, which does come installed with this distribution. I'll pull it down now. Is I can resize the text without changing the font by viewing. So I'm going to hold the control key and scroll backwards to Dinky. I can't read that, right? Even if I go jumbo here, I still can't read it. So I'm going to hold the control key and scroll forward to jumbo. So that's a little bit better, right? I'm going to close the file. Normally, if you make changes, it complains. But you can see I'm not changing the font. That's why it allows me to close. This is the same file, by the way. I'll resize stuff on the fly. Holding down the control key while scrolling. All right. I can also use a couple of different things for closing, like uh, control Q. So yeah, a lot of things with that control key. And uh, X in the corner. The other one is Alt and F4. If you're using a, uh, maybe a laptop, it may be Function Alt F4. And then if you're using a laptop, you may want to try it if you've got a touchpad. Hold the control key and using two fingers and push your fingers up and down on that touchpad. It may do this. It may not. You can always do this the old fashioned way. So if you are sending these files uh, either via FTP, you put them on a USB stick or um, emailing that to your friend, that has a Microsoft system or Mac. Um, rethink this renaming business for files with single extensions. No extensions, I'm sorry. Put an extension is what I'm trying to say. Rename it like a.txt. I can tell you what a Mac system will do. It'll try to interpret that as an application. That's a no-no. And more importantly, on a Microsoft system, it probably will just say, huh, what is it? So do yourself a favor when you send it to your friend, rename that thing. To like uh, .txt. All right, a couple of tips in, a, in using PDFs. Okay, I will go full screen. So again, you can just double tap on that too if you want to do it that way. But in either case, um, this is a printer, obviously. So you can do the uh, click the zoom thing over here. You can also use the same method. Hold down your control key, and I'm using my USB based computer mouse scroll wheel to resize on the fly. This will go to 10,000%, which is ridiculous, and all the way down to 12 and somewhere in between. So if I got it down to this size, I'm going to click in here once to let it refocus. So let's say I wanted to uh, look at this area here a little bit closer. I hold down my control key and scroll forward on my computer mouse. And then I let go of the control key and I can scroll normally. I can use the arrow keys or I can use page up and down. I can also grab a hold of this with my mouse if it does have some room down here. But more importantly, I can see what that is. Holding down the control key, scrolling back, letting go of the control key. And I can either pull it up 
or I can use page up and down, or I can scroll. Lots of different ways of doing things, folks. I'm going to close that. The home folder also contains hidden files and folders. So anytime you install themes, it sometimes makes changes to icon sets and everything else, and sometimes these buttons. So I'm going to come back to this in a second. So we can show alternatives by changing the way that we view this menu, right? By right clicking and show alternatives. There's, in this case, four. I'm going to hit cancel and then I'll switch to the regular one. So that's what you normally look like. Not you, the menu part, application switch. That's more of a condensed version. And some of your themes will make changes to these icons and sometimes the timer. And each time you change themes, you should always log in and out of your system, if not a restart. Even including mouse pointers, it should be at least a bare minimum of login logout. All right, so I'm going to switch this back to show alternative standard menu. All right, so we are dealing with maybe themes. You went into Get Global, you added some extra themes, and a lot of people never pay attention to that blue line. In other words, the bottom line is nothing, nothing is perfect. All right, if you do the install on any theme, however you found it, uh, wait till it finishes the install. Sometimes it'll ask you for a password also, a couple of times. Wait until it says installed and use, then close the box. With that said, a lot of these themes also install wallpapers and sometimes mouse cursors and icon sets. This sweet theme actually installed another one. I only installed this one and then it installed this one too. KDE Story also installed um, another wallpaper. So the cursor themes are in here and the reason I brought up the file manager because I'm going to show you where the location of these are. So the radioactive I normally install using my file manager but today I decided to use get new cursors just to have a little fun. And again, I normally install mouse cursor using only the file manager, but I need to pick it in here. That's okay though. Um, so that one has a trash can. This one has a trash can. It came with the sweet theme that I installed. The Breeze and the Breeze Lite have a gray trash can. That means they're not able to be in, uninstalled by me as the current user, because I don't have the rights to remove this. Because these are installed in USR share icons, which is protected by root permissions. So far, so good. All right, I concept candy icons. So as we add global themes, um, we start using them and we have different options. And sometimes we turn things on and some things, well, they go kind of south on you and you don't know how to recover. Well, first let me talk about the recovery part and then I'll get into the file manager file locations. Let's say you lost the panel bar. You only have wallpaper here. Um, don't panic. You can always remember this. Key runner is still running. S-E-T. And then hit enter. It opens up your quick settings. Then you hit appearance. You look at this default. You click it. And it'll normally look like this kind of a box. And you select both of these and you hit apply. 99.5% of your stuff will return to normal. Then you can log out and log back in or restart. Okay? Now, let me um, just cancel all that. I'm going to discard. So that's how you do a recovery, and it should put your panel back to where this was. Now, your file manager, again, a couple more tricks for you. Pull this up, pull this down, double click, however you want to do this. Your file manager also has hidden files and folders. Most modern Linux file managers, you can use Control-H, and it'll display that. Hamburger menu. Control H, hidden files and directories. Another name for directories is folders. Okay, I've been doing this quite a while, but more importantly, I always install this folder manually if it's not here on any Linux distribution. And this is where I normally install mouse cursors. So normally I have a demo folder sitting here that I have some demo files and there's some mouse pointers are in here. That's what I call them. And this is radioactive right here. I got this from gnome-look.org. It's the same one that the system installed. I believe they even get their same uh, material from the same databases. But more importantly, 
I could just uncompress that and throw this in dot icons, any of one of those mouse pointers. And then I go to system settings to pick them. So this, this is where they're stored when you manually install them, dot icons. <clears throat> now, why is that? Because you have control of this home folder. These are all yours. The permissions on this one is you as the user. Okay. In this case, Bob, it's just a made up name. That's my current user for today. Okay. However, the other mouse cursors are installed in your root USR share icons folder. I'm not going to go in there. That one's protected by root permissions. That's why you don't have the capability under most conditions to delete these. But anytime you add, get new cursors or add a new theme and the new theme has a mouse pointer or mouse cursor theme, it adds it not only here, but the actual place is in here. Hopefully that was clear. There's also files in .local. Just going to make you aware of them because sometimes when you undelete themes, they don't get rid of everything. And if you're concerned with disk space, I want to let you see where they're located. Here's wallpapers for you. There's the sweet wallpapers. Right click, configure. There's sweet wallpapers right here. If I open containing folder, it goes to the exact same location. Okay. Dot local share wallpapers. So far, so good. Okay. We also have a folder called Plasma and under look and feel, all right, I'll pull this down a little bit and let you see there's three things here. And I want to go to settings under appearance. These are those three themes, KDE story, sweet and sweet and bar blue. Okay. I'm not advocating you need to do anything. I'm just showing you this. Also, if I go full screen, let's uh, look for another folder called icons. So as I pointed out, this theme here called Sweet, this one here, installed a icon set called Candy Icons. Well, they're right here. Sometimes I toss them in here on different distributions. But in either case, I wanted to let you see that, yes, you have hidden files and folders. Here's your born again shell history, by the way. That's that command if you're missing your basic folders. One more time, xdg-user-dirs-update, all one word, no spaces in there, in console. But this is where your born again shell history is located. Alt and, alt and H, control H, sorry, not alt, control H. All right, so we can do a lot of things with it. Also, you can do split panes by an F3. And what is this good for? Well, if I'm dealing with my demo drive over here, and I wanted to transfer some of those mouse pointers. Um, it's in a compressed format, but let's say I wanted to do the Pokemon. I'm going to open up my downloads folder and I'm going to make a copy here. Now I have this in my downloads F3 to turn that off. And more importantly, it's if I open up downloads, you'll see that in there. I transferred it from that folder. You can also do this. If you are wanting to, uh, what's this that's open in the back? I'm sorry. Let's close that. So I'm going to resize that and pull this to the side and hit control N. It opens up a new box. And I'm going to resize this slightly for the screen resolution. And more importantly, I'm going to go to the demo folder here and open these files up. I'm still in home downloads here. I'm in my demo drive drive over here. So if I wanted a piece of music, for instance, I will find something here like an MP3, drag it across. Choice is to copy or move. Well, copy. What's another method of doing this? All right. So I'm going to click in here once and I'm going to hold down the control key and drag it across. It didn't ask me anything. It made a copy across because I held down the control key. Close. Home folder. Resizing icons on the fly from Dinky to, well, in the middle or jumbo, your choice. Pulling that up, pulling that down. Double clicking and close. So think about some of the software. Maybe LibreOffice 7.6 might be nice. Dictionary to go with that, uh, that uh, combination meal. Just a little joke there. Uh, graphics, let's talk about the welcome screen for a second say hello to the mascot. I'm going to click over to tab number four 
and click on GIMP. GIMP is like Photoshop. Full screen. It opens up Discover Center and it's ready for install. I'll pull it back down. You want the Krita? You can click that. Again, it still opens up to Discover Center and you can install that also. Close, close, and thank you for watching.